Hello everyone, welcome to Sahit Academy's uh, Webline Literature Series. Today's program is in English language. Uh, in the last those who have been following our online English series, they will, uh, one second, just hold on. Hello everyone, welcome to Sahit Academy's uh, Webline Literature Series. Today's program is in English language. Uh, in the last those who have been following our online English scene. That's a deaf word, yeah, okay. Now, now we are back live. Yeah, sorry, sorry about the glitch. Uh, so um, those who have been watching our English series, they will know that we talked about why people write poetry, why people do read poetry, what poetry does to people, what poetry means to those who are writing poetry, and etc. And the last episode we had, uh, uh, we, we had a wonderful session of poetry reading with very young poets. Today, we have very, very, very eminent poets with us. And this is our last uh, program of the year. And uh, we have one, the first poet who is joining us is uh, Dr. Basabi Fraser. She's an award-winning poet, children's writer, editor, translator, and academic. She's a professor and writer of English and creative writing and director of Scottish Center for Toggle Studies at Edinburgh, Napier University. And she's a Royal, Fund, Royal Literary Fund Fellow and Honorary Fellow of Center for South Asian Studies at the University of Edinburgh. Basabi has authored around 20 books, published several articles and chapters, both academic and creative. And as a poet, she has been widely anthologic. Basabi lives and she joins us today from Edinburgh. She has been declared outstanding uh, woman of Scotland, woman of Scotland by Salte Society in 2015. Her other awards include Kavi Salam from the Poetry Paradigm and Voice in Voice of the Republic in India in 2019, the World Masala Foundation Award for Excellence in Poetry in 2017, Women Empowered Arts and Culture Award in 2010, and AIO Prize for Poetry. Services in Scotland in 2019. Welcome to the show, Basabi. It's our great pleasure to have you here. And our next poet is Menka Shivdasani. And uh, she has four collections of poetry, her most uh, recent being Pause. Uh, she's a co translator of Freedom and Fishers. It's one of the most important anthology of poetry. She's a, it is a uh, Sindhi Partition Poetry, which is published by Sahit Academy, and she's the editor of Anthology of Women's Writing that was brought out by Sparrow in Bombay. And she has co edited, uh, she has taught two anthologies of contemporary Indian English poetry for, for the uh, e magazine Big Bridge. Uh, yeah, widely published poet, and uh, her work has been represented in the Saiba English Literature Textbook of the University of Bombay. Menka has received the Ethos Literary Award in 2019 and the Rabindranath Tagore Literary Prize Certificate for excellent contribution to literature. Uh, welcome to the show, uh, Ms. Menka. Pleasure to be here. Yeah, great. And our next poet is Prabal Kumar Basu. And uh, uh, he's one of the very important poets in the post independence Bengali literature. Uh, and he has uh, 19 volumes of poetry, two short story collections, three essay collections, and one verse drama collection in Bengali. His works have been translated and published in various Indian and foreign languages. Uh, he, he a passionate advocate of, for revival of verse drama, he has been associated with production of verse, verse dramas or other, as well as performance poetry, Prabal has edited signposts, another like how what I was telling uh, Menka's uh, Sindhi partition poetry. This very, very, very important collection of uh, uh, Sindhi independence, Bengali poetry. In it, it, uh, it's called signposts. It, has, it is available in English. And uh, also, that uh, he is the editor of uh, Yapan Chitra, a Bengali magazine on art, poetry, literature, and culture. Uh, he's one of the, as I was telling that he was one of the major voices of uh, Bengali poetry in the last 60, 60 years. He has received the Gauri Bhattacharya Award uh, for his uh, book, first very first publication, 
has also been awarded West Bengal State Academy for Poetry in 2005. Uh, Prabal has read his poetry in various international forum as national forum. Sir, it's our pleasure to have you here with us today. Yeah, fine. So, yeah. So uh, the next uh, poet to join us is Sohini Basit. So, one of the most exciting talents in the recent times to come out of India. Her first poetry collection, "We Live in the Newness of Small Differences," was uh, awarded the inaugural International Bengali Prize two years ago. She studied literature and creative writing at the universities of Delhi, Warwick, and East Anglia. But she was awarded Malcolm Bradbury Continuation Grant for Poetry, and she was awarded Tote of Arms Arts Award for her poetry in 2017. She is based out of Delhi. She is editor. Ah, uh, great to have you with us, Sony. Ah, uh, our next uh, poet is uh, Pramod Jain, and here Pramod. Uh, uh, He's a, he's a kind of a something what we call as a philosopher kings of Plato's time. He is a civil servant. He is a creative writer. He is a great scholar. He was educated in India, England, and USA, and uh, he received six gold medals. And uh, before he joined Indian Administrative Service, and uh, he has been he's undergone training in across the world, and he has worked in Jammu and Kashmir as well as in Delhi in the Ministry of Culture. and he was joint secretary of culture and he has done a lot for promotion of literature visual arts and uh, drama and dance etc and uh, his first book poetry one is going to be published very very soon it's our great pleasure to have you with us sir thank you very much it's my pleasure entirely yes good to meet you all thank you thank you uh and uh, No, I missed out that the uh, Menka also received the Unis de Sosa uh, award last week. So, I mean, thanks for reminding me, Menka. So, it's a great pleasure. So, we'll start with Basabi. Basabi, you please go first. Please unmute yourself. Thank you. Please unmute yourself. thank you very much for that very generous introduction and it's it's really an honor and privilege to be invited by the sahitya academy in my own country to read today with such illustrious poets so thank you uh the first poem that i will read before i hand it over to my fellow poets uh explains that i live between two worlds uh it's called between my two worlds it was written when my mother was still alive When I left London I wrote of English summers of bluebells and blackbirds and dreamt of the snow I came back to Scotland and longed for the monsoons the flocks flying homewards in the deep sunset glow my mother's concern my father's care my daughter's soft body that wasn't there so I switched my priorities and went back to stay carrying deep longings when i went away to be enfolded in india in its rich living spree yet turning to britain in my memory till the unexpected happened and my worlds switched again to experience long daylight and pine for the rain of a country burning with the sun and my pain of living between two worlds that i cannot maintain So while my father falters and my mother grows old I hold this my country as my daughter holds thank you yeah, I mean that itself is very difficult living between two worlds yeah okay uh, america please go ahead thank you this year on the last day of this horrible year i would like to read a poem about the passage of time It's a very recent and published book called Silver Sands. Can, can you repeat? Can you repeat your title? Silver Sands. Okay. This is a poem that I wrote very recently. It is not. It is unpublished. And it goes like. Hello. Hello. These strands of. अच्छा नहीं इतना कौन आया ना तामे कितना? Wrinkled beach. 
Atane, no worry, no worry. So, I'm in mean, a session. Only see that's deep into the distance with childhood, youth, and all of life's tornadoes lie buried under waters that have turned calm upon the face. I have washed the sand away from my burning eyes and learned to ignore the grains that stick. My feet have dried and the wind is cool against my cheek. You and I, we scratched our stories on weather-beaten rocks. We thought they'd last a lifetime, but the waves that washed ashore took bits of us with every turning tide to horizons we had never dreamed that we could touch. I find you in the clouds and you still turn me into rain. I have left no footprints here, but lightning flashes and thunder breaks the silence. I will return to shore someday where coconut palms will greet me with leafy arms and the old fort with its gravelly voice will welcome me home. Thank you. That's a good one. Sohini, please unmute yourself. Yeah. Little, little bit louder, little bit louder, please. This is the poem, the name's Plot. Am I audible now? Yeah, yeah, please. Okay, Plot. A mongoose evaluates the afternoon backyard, its soil can dry, sprouting discarded pipes, batteries, and upturned commod. But under the guava tree, she digs up the ghosts of flowers with her charcoal feet, renames each weed, each unloved root with her nose, even as her pampas grass tail consoles the hibiscus birthless this winter. Then, hitting the boundary wall, she decides to make a tunnel connecting this once garden to the world of water buffaloes, cranes. No movement escapes these agate eyes. While dusk falls, the sky thickens to help the crate slink away. And here is when, if we blink, we lose the plot. Yeah, okay. Good. Prabal? Yeah. Gone missing. What's gone? What is a miss? Something is missing. Foggy everywhere. There is no sun. The much loved path is missing. Flowers not blooming. Outcome is missing. Where has been the friendship gone? No ebbs and flows of a relationship. The relationship actually cease to exist. The autobiography of the river is missing. So is the stone on the river bed. The craving for each other vanished. The city sky has no evening star. There is nowhere to run away to. Where is the hand to tightly hold on to? A shoulder to rest the head. The gurgling of spring is missing. The keys is no more so intense. The signal to warn about danger faded out. Even one's own faithful shadow is missing. What's not there? What is a miss? Something is missing. This land, India, my country is no more there. Thanks. Okay. Uh, Promote, sir. Can you please unmute? Yeah, thank you. Can you hear me? Yeah, please go ahead, sir. Yeah. Please go ahead. This poem, uh, The Candle, My Countryman. Sorry? It was written, The Candle, My Countryman. Yeah. It was written on the 5th of April this year. You understand the significance of the date. Just lit the candle of light and hope, of peace and bliss, of life itself, to dispel darkness and fear, and this scary virus brought in here by the rich and the religious. To push it all beyond time and space, beyond a universe, beyond many a multiverse, beyond beyond, where space vanishes, vanishment also vanishes. 
a dipavali in april seeks the lord's blessings for children of ma bharti my siblings find for light and hope amid darkness and fear a virus staring at her and we trudge through solidarity to a shared new future of light and hope of peace and bliss and a new life itself aligned with high consciousness the lord himself thank you wasabi sorry thank you um i was i think i'm going to read a poem from one of my first well my first collection uh and it's to a little girl whom i met once as a little indian girl listened she came barefooted to my side a dusky little frame in white and urged me with her gentle smile to tell a story on that night no not a princess riding by on winged horses overseas to rescue sleeping princesses from demons large as people trees so as the stars peeped one by one i spoke about another sun another world another race tucked away in distant space and a sandy beach of warmth the sun and not a scorching ball of fire a world of fairy purple clouds to ride on drive through to aspire but how to get there asked her eyes those eyes that spoke much more than words in sputniks swift and sure i said as we sped through time towards that land of new delight where we would never know the fears of hunger on a winter's night or thirst on mornings hot with tears where colors splashed the world around but left us humans undeferred where fancy was a friend indeed and romance just an unheard word she clapped her hands and danced and ran her black hair flying her rags unfurled she could not speak but through her eyes i had discerned where her wings had turned okay menka i'm going to move on to a poem about a, it's based on a sindhi and punjabi folk tale uh, but swini and meher it's a tragic romance as they usually are and it was published recently in the bloomsbury book of great indian love poems swini a drift what is this river that takes me along with a leaking pot against the setting sun shadows fall like lattice gates upon the face and a song streams softly in the dark whispers in the wind i have crossed these waters many times before but tonight the fireflies like false hopes in the sky turn dusk to darkness with every flash and my lover seems so far away on the other side tonight the clay that these cold fingers cradle falls apart as though fire had never touched it i swini born in desert lands i know the touch of sun and earth as it crumbles in my hand the water black as death is seeping through this broken pot bites my burning skin as crocodiles circle in the storm meher i feel you like a folk tale in my bones but where are you and these whirling waves as my world disintegrates thank you so any poem is called uh, the stains on the table cloth are trying to say something again i have taken to listening to conversations i don't understand languages i will never learn i tell myself that this eavesdropping is for research only 
perhaps it will generate some poetry language begets language and immediately the world swells up and i begin to see how syllables can bounce out of toasters or are dropped delicately to dissolve in teacups how vowels fall through the fine holes of a colander phrases you want to swallow whole made of sounds that shine a globule of light and at the end of spoons those bits of table talk i try very hard to catch between my fingers or chopsticks delirious am- amateur nothings that's all on the good ones here yeah. prabal yeah blinds god this poem was written sometimes during 93 94 93 i think blinds god with the lump of chocolate in hand a blind man was trying to draw god on the pavement with a beggar boy watching him closely as soon as the drawing was finished the boy shouted where is god this is the face of almighty erasing the face the blind started drawing again the second time as he was done the boy broke into laughter you are wrong again this is the face of jesus wiping it out swiftly the blind again started creating the god in this manner every time the blind tried to draw god it became the face of someone else and the boy on this pretext went on rejecting the god tired of drawing the wrong picture the whole day the blind at last ended up drawing his own face and made the eyes visionless the boy applauded this is how exactly the god looks thanks a promote please unmute yourself sir please unmute yourself is that fine now yeah thank you goodbye babu ji this was written in the middle of the year when you had a lot of migration and cross migration following the pandemic goodbye babu ji goodbye madam ji i am off to my desh forsaken by your city the city of my youth i will walk a thousand miles with baggage of life and hope on my head on the road i constructed years ago soaked in sweat and fueled by me and fueled by hot air back home the desh of my childhood fresh air clean water free laughter and a lot of poverty awaits me and my restless soul yes they will give me a warm welcome and share all they have hunger dust and foolishness i will offload my broken dreams of secure future in a faceless city thank you ab basavi i as i said earlier i lost my mother some time ago 2005 and for a long time i couldn't write anything to her for her and then one day i had a dream and she appeared and the poem started and so this is from my book called letters to my mother and other mothers i will remember you whenever i see one sturdy soul giving up comforts and career to teach children in unmapped spots i can feel your spirit near whenever i see a door open to a beggar and what a woman poor grain and money offer a sari i see you once again whenever i'm on a train watching vendors with trinkets snacks or tea urging their wares on commuters wearily i can see you buying from each one tirelessly whenever the nearby village drunk in desperate hunger looks for work i find you finding tasks for him in your neat garden for a week whenever maids are driven out on charges of unproven crime i see you giving them a place of dignity in your own home 
Whenever there is a lamp to light, a pain to ease, a scar to heal, whenever there is thirst to quench, I see your spirit revealed. Okay. Thank you. That's for all moms. Okay. Yes. Uh, men come. Okay, so this is another, to continue the theme of migrants, the migrant crisis. This is something I wrote when the lockdown happened and uh, migrants were going home. I titled it Home. Last night, a tree nudged me awake and said, I must go. My leaves have dried out and the branches are falling. My roots are not as deep as I had believed. And that is not my fault at all. Home, it turns out, is elsewhere. I gave it all here, split my skin for the seed to sprout, shifted the earth, broke the soil, felt my way through the cracks. I sought the sunshine, braved the heat, saved dewdrops for birds, Watched them learn to fly, one hesitant wing, and then another, the invisible lift of their toes. My roots dug deeper as the soil stayed firm. I yearned for freedom, but this was the only home I knew. When the first plastic bag flew past the garden wall, it cheerily waved and brought color to my field. I smiled back, lifted it with my leafy arms, and we spoke. The city had its stories, and I knew none of them. Greed lay dank in its sewers, and garbage grew, rotting amidst the bricks, spilling into my space without a sound. I must leave now. But my roots are choked. Pull me out of the debris, let me go. Shall I walk the highways with my jagged tips or simply burn to the ground? Then it fell, wooden faced, upon my eyes. Thank you. Before Sohini starts, I uh, mean, okay, the year might have been really bad, so the evening is getting better and better. First, we came to know that uh, uh, Menka has received UNIS Rousseau's award. And just now the news is received that Basha B has been selected for commander of the British Empire, CBE, wow. in the field of education, culture, and integration. So very good. Congratulations, Basha B. It's a great, it's a very, very great thing to happen. Just now. Congratulations. It's amazing. Congrats. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. congratulations. Yeah. So, Hini, yeah, please go ahead. Congratulations, Basini. I wanted to take a pause from my own poems and uh, read this poem by uh, Mangalis Zabral, who we lost just a few weeks ago. This is a translation by Arvind Krishna Merotra. Oh. So, here, here's a homage to the great poet. Poem of Paper. One day we find sheets of paper that were once important scattered everywhere around us. We see them even as we go to our sleep. They put an end to our dreams and cause insomnia. Our everyday lives, the things we hate to admit to ourselves, are buried in them. Which is why, much as we like, we cannot even sell them to the rag and bottle man. We have no choice except to sit down and destroy them. This is how old letters get torn, written by sympathetic friends when we were down and out, declarations of unrequited love, along with the poems by some major poets, poems we believed would remove the world's hunger, get reduced to shreds. Now you cannot even make a paper boat or missile with them, the kind that flies a short distance and turns back. We have become wordless and all but lost our speech. We go on tearing the paper. It's our only hope. Yeah. He's a, I mean, he's a great uh, translator. I mean, where does he live so many nowadays, Mehrotra? I... I mean, you have to unmute yourself. 
I'm not sure. I believe there are though, no, somewhere in the hills. Okay, somewhere in the hills. Okay, it's a great. Yeah. So, Prabhu? Yeah. <clears throat> change. The shoes are getting changed. Dress, friendship. Things are changing hands. Speech, protests. Changed address, marriage, allegiance. Political principles are changing. Truth, religious beliefs. Chairs changing occupant, power, promises. Dates are changing ways of life, public opinion. Relationships are altered, habits, medical practices. Faces are changing, masks, compassion. But everything is normal. There is no change in both human and God. Okay. Thanks. Pramod, uh, sir. Uh, my next poem is USA Burns. This was written in June this year and is very can you, can you repeat the title, sir? Uh, this is USA Burns. Okay. This is time specific and contextual, just about the middle of this year when you had the racial rights all over. Okay. A hundred cities burn while the old man spews venom and threats and hides for safety from own people in anger. Eerie silence, noisy rage, peaceful anger and angry peace. Boots in the rose garden and fire in the church say it all. Inequality, racism and disharmony, dying values, missing humanism, dollars for rights and a bonus for detention, a tragic comedy of sorts. A whole nation drowns in white tears, black blood, and a thousand four-letter words. The errant cop's knee hastens death, destruction, and governor's helplessness. Bullets and harsh words do not succeed. Thank you. Bashabi? Bashabi CBE, we have to say here afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm still just Bashabi. Yeah. Okay. Um, this is a poem written in the voice of two children. Uh, when a board, mindless border comes between them. Um, I've written on the partition, which some of you may know. And while I was working on the partition, uh, I was very disturbed. And this is one of the poems that came out of it. This border. Uh, I must say, I'm really glad that I, I hate to make a political statement in a, in a poetry session, I'm so glad that Trump is out because walls are out. And this is about walls, walls that create walls in, of the mind as well. This border. There was a time when you and I chased the same butterfly, climbed the same stolid trees with the fearless expertise that children take for granted before their faith is stunted. Do you remember how we balanced a wheel down dusty paths with childish zeal? Do you remember the ripples that shivered as we ducked and dived in our river? Do you remember what we shared of love and meals and all we dared together without fears because we were one in those past years before we knew that butterflies were free to share our separate skies, that they could cross with graceful ease to alight on stationary trees on either side of this strange line that separates yours from mine, for whose existence we rely entirely on our inward eye. This border by whose callous side our inert wheel lies stultified. This border that cuts like a knife through the waters of our life slicing fluid rivers with the absurdity of a new myth that denies centuries of friendships as and families. This border that now decrees one shared past with two histories. This border that now decides the sky between us as two skies. This border 
born of blood spilt free makes you my friend my enemy oh okay so louis hamilton also knighted today so our uh, same uh, set of announcements so he must be the youngest one to get knighted so we have to call him sir louis now okay men ka so far i've been reading poems that are unpublished new very recent i'll read a poem from my book fraser it's called how to kill a rat okay. so we're talking of violence and murders and what people do to each other how to kill a rat the task is almost impossible beheading comes easy these days but not with rats a swish of tail behind the dining table it's gone you know it's still there in the morning when the creamy layer of setting curd is nibbled through the lid fell with a clang at night but no one heard so you try the peaceful methods a piece of cheese you've been told will do the trick lace it with love and a drop or two from a poison tube you watch it gather mold then throw it out a piece of rat cake then color of coal brittle as your heart you hide a piece in every nook believe your space is safe you've built this world around you mumbai to mosul kabul to kashmir peshawar to paris all the world is your home but there are rats your sofa becomes an enemy bunker nibbled through at the bottom with holes for escape safe harbor from your groom and dying will if you get one nine more will be born in the trenches sometimes as you watch tv or read your holy book you wonder about killing and your own beliefs no it isn't easy to kill a rat but what does it take to live instead with the enemy beneath your skin thank you thank you uh, so any one is um, called north delhi winter the walls are thick with white wash here but when the smog climbs in it is difficult to tell which layer you can pass through the overhead bulb is switched on all the time even at night one must convince oneself light is warmth warmth is light but before sleep is heavy shut the windows tight lest you wake up while it's still dark and mistake it for the door you have always wanted to travel through in two months deprived of water the bogun villa will take over for so for now let us hold all the pine cones we can they are burning leaves in the afternoon to smoke up the space between us you are leaving saying the smog never promised to cushion your fall robot yeah be with me i am first fading away like a cigarette tapering off as it passes hands on a winter night be by my side time is first running out the way a person shrinks in the afternoon shadow be there by my side be with me be with me be with me isolated people are slowly trudging onto the rim of loneliness from trust to mistrust there are no hands to hold no shoulder to cry on no pair of lips waiting for the keys like the dark ring around the light faltering before a vein as the solitary trees without any prop humans are trying to triumph over the crisis be with me okay thank you uh pramod sir yeah this is called earth is bleeding and it conveys a flavor of the current year intellectualism and all that glaciers weep forests cry 
air is suffocating, water is driven to suicide. A tired, wounded earth bleeds with agony, pain, and helplessness. Reverie is a possible freedom from man. A few wise men meet annually to debate and discuss the destiny of the dead and future of the unborn. Thank you. Basabi, maybe it's a slightly change the course of the kind of poems that are being read now so far, something different. Uh, well, I was going to read from my uh, just beginning and the end of my epic poem uh, about the two rivers that flow through my life, the Ganga and the Tay. Uh, and uh, it's in the voice of the two rivers. They call me Ganga, the spirit of my birth, it's a glorious myth. I am a dream of Lord Shivers, rising as a stream. My Thunderer, a sick secret, a liquid secret still spurging for my knotted hair. My feminine will released to roam beyond this snowy lair. While the destroyer sleeps, his latent power leaps into my cascades, bidding me grow, go forth and multiply. Gushing through decades from the vast north, through flattened plains, down to my bay. What do they call you? On which day were you conceived? The Tay. My Celtic caves heaved as Nordic waves received the omen of my birth. Even before they set out for my shores, as Thor and Odin would ordain in years to come, they call me the Tay. The truth is, I too have a bay. I have this, uh, my firth. I have this isthmus of an island to cross, but yours is the earth where I would not be you. A subcontinent spread out for your good or your ill will to brazenly toss in. This too is north, but further north than you. And I'll read the end. You and I can only do, that's the tale, you and I can only do what we do best. That is flow with the certainty of continuity, Ganga. Letting our water sacred truth seep into human consciousness as the source of life, like light and trees, the earth and breeze, the tay. Our rhythm spelling harmony, which if nurtured, can guarantee shanti for eternity. Good, good. Uh, Menka? And while we are speaking of feminine will, <laughs> yes, I am woman. There are two versions of this poem. Uh, in Brazil, I have the shorter version. Somebody posted a longer version online and you find that version there. I am woman. Woman of iron from an exploded star, I embed myself in a crusty earth that waits for the sun to rise. Hammer me into sheets, stretch me into wires. I will turn into a plow or light up the world in return. Freed from the meteorite with lightning tongue, I expand without breaking. You may melt me and mix me. I emerge even purer, magnetic and ready to strike. I am woman in her element. Thank you. Um, so any? Mm. This is called, uh, they have more to say. One of my uh, insect poems. Yeah. They have more to say. Mud on their mandibles, the wasps are carrying around my anger, expensive black limiting the gold. I am chewing paper, processing letters, claiming that, put in the wrong compartment, these part B, part and creatures of summer can bring down aeroplanes. The wasps take earth to air and build their stalactite organ pipes where they will choose to birth stingers, daughters over sons, 
who are expected to live for a year accumulate in half slumber and answer to the name marginata oh, good one so prabal please unmute yourself prabal please unmute yourself sorry yes. why do you ask when i have spoken a lot remained untold why do you ask what i have seen i missed out much more why do you ask whatever i have written is minuscule compared to what i did not why do you ask what i have comprehend is way below what i did not why do you ask what i have given is much less than what was not offered why do you ask what i have learned has left behind success of lessons course of lessons why do you ask what i have built i have wrecked much more still keeping faith in me thanks promote sir masks gloves and a vaccine golden masks designer gloves corona warriors galore add to the hopes harvest and the candles diyas and claps the jugaad focus on the positive light dispels darkness and disease and the divine will surely bless but the unlock reigns infections stimulus packages compete with the dying and the dead an elusive vaccine tests a nation's resolve fear and pain courage and hope compete for space on a tired aging hungry planet thank you um uh, well a lot of uh, some of the poems which are short and deep some are reflective some are current events um what about something like uh, something as we are on the cusp of a new year so something about future maybe we can start with the youngest all of you so any something about future like anything about future future workplace future library whatever so i have a short poem uh, that kind of marks the end of one time a year maybe and the beginning of another mm -hmm. lightning never strikes in straight lines you learn the redundancy of flower pots barefoot on a rooftop after a storm standing among green leaves and bleeding terracotta however the way to view spilt milk with dry eyes is to see the spillover as clouds on the floor to let a cat in and watch her lap up the sky to live through such sandpaper days you must savor the rough edges and unmake the bed until you find last year's beliefs lying fabric still amongst its creases Basavi Moments of truth and hope okay. That moment when the first bird sings while the silent night still prays to stay but a signal is sent with that glimmer of light promising the break of day that moment when the first snowdrops appear like a magic wand's gift startling the snow and the dim sun's glow with the certainty that this mantle will lift that moment when the pensive sky broods over the burning earth and the shadows roll over plain and hill till the monsoons burst with mirth that moment when a baby leaps from a mother's arms with gurgling glee and the certainty that its fall will be stalled by the waiting arms of love's certainty sanctity that moment when the sunflower turns its bright yellow gaze to follow the sun across the sky and over the horizon drooping and dozing till its return at dawn that moment when butterflies dance when petals shimmer with summer's glamour when birds fly home before moths flit in and the night is alive with the crickets clamor that is the moment 
when we know that the moths search for light, the crickets delight, while darkness lingers, will soon be subdued in the heraldic song of a certain return in a prophetic bird's raga before dawn. Thank you. Um, Menka, that's uh, maybe something, uh, if you remember, vaguely remember, it's a long time ago that I read something about few future hope in uh, that, uh, that Fisher's book, that about Sindhi, collection of Sindhi partition poetry, something made towards the end of this uh, collection. Gosh, I have no idea now. No problem. Please go ahead. Yeah. But uh, this is a poem I wrote recently about preparing yourself for a new era, okay. a new age. It's uh, about Diwali spring cleaning. Mm -hmm. And I think it also works for the end of the year as we move into 2021. I just called it Diwali. It is not the dust you must remove. It's time to orient, realign. Should you begin with the feet where the most dirt collects or at the top where cobwebs cloud the mind? Perhaps that musty beating center, the rogues gallery of the heart where lovers hang on chipping paneled walls. So much to do. So much to slow away, the flaking tissue of bygone years, necrotic veins beneath the skin, nerves that have learned what silence means and how to still the stream. No fireworks this year as the virus creeps, but explosions burst in the blood and nostrils turn to smoke. Keep going. And when mind and body are whipped into shape, the burnished silver lamp that is your head will turn to pure gold flame rising to the sky. You will know then that it is time to celebrate. Thank you. Uh, Prabal? Yeah, <clears throat> as we are on the verge of the new year, so what is something for the future? To me, it's only love. So the name of the poem is All of a Sudden. If I suddenly fall in love all over again and I in flames jump into the water thinking you to be there all the water vaporizes by the sudden touch of fire how will you then hide yourself if all of a sudden all these premonitions come true. Thanks. Ramot, sir? A uh, bit of a philosophy on the year end. God, where are you? God, where are you? I wonder, sir or madam. On earth, in outer space, sheltered in a cave, below North Pole's glaciers, or in my heart and thought. Are you my soul or consciousness or just my conscience? Do you exist only in someone's psyche? Are you were invented for social order? What is your job description, job profile and CV like? Where do you see yourself 10 years down the line? God, where are you? Please show up and rest all my doubts. Thank you. So we, we will have uh, one poem from all of you, one poem each from all of you. Yeah, okay. Sohini, please start. One final poem. Okay. Give me one moment. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. This is called uh, What Will Be Glass? What will be glass? We had not fallen asleep, but had we woken up before? A room so incorrigibly bright that all the walls were windows. Someone laughing outside, neck deep in winter grass. You thought that last night's brain fever sailed in right through with that laughter. Well, my version is more fiction, less fog. Other comfort in darkness. 
Were we counting clouds or the number of evening walkers looking up at clouds? Nothing beyond our fingers in any case. Over fields, white bodies of birds puncturing a less white sky. A deer, or as usual, endless dog bark. April's slow hours stretched out and wrapped around the sapling's thin arms. If we are lucky, we will never remember the same details. A strange belonging or some strange light. Masavi? Please unmute yourself. Yes, this is to my grandson, little Louis, who's 20 months, but old now, but I didn't see him while the lockdown lasted over six months. So this call, when all this is over, to Louis. I could not be there to watch you take your first steps and feel your joy of walking at full tilt on each work waking day. I could not be with you when you helped mama and papa to blow out the candle on your first birthday. You nod to me on FaceTime with obvious recognition. You rock for me at showtime with serious concentration. You point to the pigeons as I share your fascination. I watch the sky with you as they seek their destination. But one day, when all this is over, we will walk away together, your little hand in my clasp. We will watch the swans gather at the edge of the lake to welcome little Louis with the ducks and the drakes. We'll run through the fields of sunny daffodils. We'll play hide and seek in caverns and creeks. We'll sail away far. We'll whisper to stars. We'll muck in the garden. And all of a sudden, if the rain comes down, we'll scamper back home. We'll sprinkle and shower the kitchen with flour. You will help me to bake your best fairy cakes. And I'll tell you a story of a dragon and fairy whom you can chase in your dreams over mountains and streams. They will bring you your wings and many magical things which we'll explore and enjoy when my Louis and I can meet once more and play as we did before. Nenka, your final poem? Uh, yeah, I was actually looking at Freedom and Fishers, but I really don't know which poem you're referring to. No, no, it's just, yeah, please go ahead with your poem. So I will read a, a fairly old poem. It's, it's uh, time when I felt a rare sense of peace. I wrote it between a, you know, a trip to Darjeeling and Sikkim. So it started, the poem started in Sikkim and ended in Darjeeling. Mm -hmm. and I, I worry about reading this sometimes because I, you know, I, there is an echo in the poem that you will recognize. And then I worry that somebody's going to say, oh, she plagiarized something there. But it's in quote marks and you will recognize the line. Yeah. Called Peaks and Troughs. When the road goes up from silver oak to pine, you catch your breath on mountain bush, sip the sunflower vine. The snow sits bleak and lovely. You watch mist intertwine. Flower and tree trunk, breeze and bullet, each of these you have been before. On the borders, battles rage. Behind rock face, wars are waged. And the ethereal mountain sits unchanged through mist. Who are you in these peaks and troughs, in this landslide world which seems to hold? Petons perch on ice and snow and on the cliffs while flowers grow. The world is far away, so far away it does not show through all the mists of this ethereal mountain. You set your roots and let the bullets go. And now, a silver oak meets the pine. We share a bit of forest in the clouds. The woods are lovely, dark and deep. See how soft the panthers sleep. Now is the time to go to sleep and let the breezes blow. Thank you. Thank you. Prabhu? I have said little. I have said little, like a silent tree 
with shadows growing large in the afternoon sun. I have said little, like the clouds gathering slowly with water secretly rising up the riverside. I have said little, like the dim light simmering at a mofficial town. I have said as little as one can when meeting after a long interlude. I have said little, much less than the wick of a winter river. I have said little like a boar floating little out of the water. I have said so little, did not have much space either. Days and nights are also small. I have said little, so that the silence in between is translated well. I have said so little that there is not much scope for misunderstanding. How much more does one need to say when you profess love? Thanks. Ramod, sir, your final poem? Finally, on a note of hope. It's called Hope. Hope is a lover's sparkling smile, a child's laughter, a bird chirp, a kitten's gamble. A lone flower's appeal Hope is a passa saved, a patient recovered, a crystal rivulet. A clear blue sky, a curtain of clouds, a smile on the beggar's face, a maiden's shy look. Hope is a star in the blue heavens. Hope is eternal poetry, eternal love, eternal soulfulness. Hope, sweet hope, noble hope. Hope in the air, water, sky, fire. Hope floats in every heart. Hope resonates in every soul. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, before we end the program, before we wishing the poets with us, uh, and the viewers, and the patrons, all of you, we are very happy New Year. I just want to pass on a very, you know, okay, very small thank you message. Uh, this year has been a richer year, not only for few, not for one, few people uh, in one or two countries. It has been a richer year for millions and millions of people in all the countries. Millions have lost a job. Many have lost home. So it has been such a very painful year. And it has been, it was a difficult year for Sahit Academy also. But we were able to continue our literary service only because of the friends who are with us today, the poets, the writers, translators, critics, they all came forward, not one or two or some hundreds of them, thousands of them, they came, they came forward. They urged us to continue. And uh, in many, even in languages, which are something like a, a Manipuri or Bodo, people came, they themselves adopted the new technology. Okay, so you are going through Zoom. Yes, we are willing to embrace the technology. Such love, such warmth, such support we never seen. So through, when I thank Sohini, Basabi, Menka, Prabol, and Pramod Kumar Jain. So through them, I thank all the, all the poets, young and old, uh, writers, translators, critics who made our work wonderful. It was a joy working with all of you. So thank you very much. So thanks to all of you. We are very, Thank very in New Year to all, the, all of you and all the viewers who are watching this on YouTube and Facebook and all the supporters and patrons of Site Academy. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much, Vatmoji. And Thank thanks you, to Ramon. all. And Thank wish you a very happy 2021. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you and all the best. Yes. Yeah. God bless you. Yes. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And Bye -bye. a happy New Year. Happy.